All right, man. Thank you, John. <clears throat> you know, you guys, uh, one of the things that really is amazing is the actual human creation, human beings, what we can do. It's unbelievable. Like listening to these guys with their ability that they have music, the intellect that, and the emotional capability, the creativity, human beings are amazing. Uh, but this last week, I was reflecting on the fact that we're actually human beings. We are created by God. And what's interesting is being a creation actually makes you dependent. And so as wonderful as we all are, we know if you don't have air, if you don't have water, if you don't have food, you're done. And we all know that. We are actually dependent on those things. We are also dependent for any type of full life to have healthy relationships. God created us in his image. He's love. We need these relationships. And so back in 1998, I was in seminary, finishing up my master's degree, and uh, I felt for the first time that God actually invited me to do a long fast. So for the first time in my life, I did a 40-day fast. Now, that was fun. Let me tell you what it's like to be dependent as a human being. But one of the craziest things, you guys, is actually my mind was sharper. I was in class and my mind was sharp. It was, it was amazing. And if I got just a little bit tired, all I would have to do is, is drink like this much juice. I, just, I did not just water. I, I did like, like juices and things of that nature. And all I'd have to do is drink this much, and it would, whoom, and my energy would come right back up. I had three friends come out and visit me from Detroit. I was in Southern Cal doing my master's. And they came out to visit me. And I had earlier in the year taken a, a hike, and it was a beautiful hike in the mountains. And so I was like, man, you guys, we've got to do this when you come. So they show up, and we go out, and we go to hike. Can I tell you what it's like to hike when you haven't eaten for 40 days? I mean, seriously, if the in, when the incline got like this much, I literally had to sit down, and I was so bummed because I just had to tell them, I can't do it. I want to go so bad. You guys just go ahead. I can't do it. Because I didn't have the energy. Do you guys ever feel like in your spiritual life, in your journey with God, in the path, right, the way of God that he set out for us, do you ever feel like you can't do it? And next thing you know, you're just sitting there. And the question I want to address, that we're going to address in this series and starting today, is is there an energy source for the spiritual side of humanity. Because I think most of us, are you're probably here or you're visiting, but you, I, th I would say almost all of us are feeling like, man, the way of God is good, right? Yeah, yeah. It's good. It's pleasing. His will is pleasing. It's perfect. It's right. And yet he says the way is you got to love me with what? All. Right? Just, how how, how y'all doing on that one? All your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the next thing you realize, man, if that is the way of God to love him with all of me, I don't know about you, but I can't do it. Anybody in here doing that? Okay. Wow, we got one. All right, all right, cool. Okay, I don't know if you want me to really dive in and see if you're doing it with all of your heart. That might be lying, and therefore you haven't. So, okay. But I mean, just loving people. Come on, you love everybody? You love everybody? You love your spouse, you love your parents, you love your boss, you love your coworkers, you love the person who hurts you deeply, you actually have had the power to be able to forgive them. John just hit finances. Are all of us in here giving God back his 10%? Whew. Man, I know I should, I, I just can't do it. I need that. Like, I, I, I can't do it. We seek things to comfort us and then they become addictions like food and purchasing stuff and pornography and alcohol. We seek other things to be significant. You guys, the spiritual life that God calls us is so good, but we just have to admit, I can't do it. But I'm gonna tell you today, there is air that you can breathe and there is food that you can take in to energize your soul. God has called us, every human being. You are created to live this life in a love relationship with God. 
So Acts chapter one, verse eight, here it is. Here's the power. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you know what's interesting, you guys? The Holy Spirit is, is used for the word breath, for air. In fact, Jesus calls him the wind. The Holy Spirit is called the stream of living water that will flow. God, Jesus tells us again, you live on every word that comes from the mouth of God and the Spirit is the one who speaks. So we hit right there, the analogy of food, water, and air, God uses for the Holy Spirit. You, are, you need food, water, and air to physically live. You need a spiritual power to have any hope of doing it. But, be, but last week, do we have hope? Okay, see, wait, we need this message. Do we have hope? I mean, four of us are like, I think, I hope. That was Easter, y'all. Remember this one? If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies because his spirit lives in you. And I'm telling you, if Easter doesn't do this in us, if Easter doesn't make us realize there is a resurrection power from the dead that God says is inside of you. So here's what I want, here's what I'm gonna tell you. You gotta believe this. Number one, we have unlimited power. You have unlimited power. Look at this, Ephesians 1, 8, and 19. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know his incomparably great power for us who believe. Okay, how many of you believe that's true? Okay, all right, that was a little bit better. We're getting there, okay? But you know what this says? I'm praying, Paul's praying that you know it. And that just doesn't mean intellectually that you know it. It means knowing it. It means experiencing it. And you know that word incomparably, it, 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 the Greek word is hyper, right? <laughs> it's where the root word is hyper. It means beyond, it means exceeding. That's why it's called immeasurably and great. I love this Greek word, megathos. Megathos, incomparably great. Look at this, Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able to do, and here it is again, immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. You guys, I, I, I would guess this. If you've been in church your whole life, you intellectually know that God raised Jesus from the dead through the power of the Holy Spirit and that incomparably great, immeasurable power is inside of you. I bet you intellectually know that. My question is, how many of us are experiencing it? That's where we're going today and for the next weeks. And here's my phrase for us today. Unlimited power is yours to receive. And I wanna tell you, God's doing a work in me personally in this, and I couldn't wait to be able to share with you what he's revealing. But I just wanna pray for us, because I'm telling you right now, that's what Paul said, right? He goes, I pray that the eyes of your heart would be enlightened so that you would know this. So God actually has to enlighten your heart today. So I just wanna say, if you're like me, and you feel like, man, if there's incomparably great power, immeasurable power, according to what he's doing in me, I'm not experiencing that. Okay, why not? If Jesus rose from the dead, and that spirit is living in us, why are we not experiencing it? Anybody want it? So here's what I wanna do, I'm gonna pray, and you pray, and you open your heart to God right now today, and say, God, would you enlighten my heart so I can know the immeasurable, incomparable, unlimited power, okay? Let's pray. Father, thank you for everyone who's present here. Thank you for the truth we're gonna look at today. And now I ask in Jesus' name that you would take your word, which is alive and active, that you would penetrate to the deepest part of our being, the innermost part into our soul, and that you would shine your light so we could see, so we could understand, and then give us the grace, God, to receive what's ours, this unlimited power. And I pray for that, God. I ask in Jesus' name 
that you might do more than we were expecting you to when we showed up to church today. And I pray for it in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so I'm gonna answer three things today. What is the power? How do we receive it? And how do we experience it? Okay, number one, real quick, what is the power? Ephesians 3.16, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit in your being. You guys, the power is the very spirit of God. That's what the power is. It's the, it's the presence of God inside of you. And that's why he says you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes inside of you. And we know throughout all my years of ministry, people said, man, I, I, you know, I learn about God. I, I get who Jesus is. I don't really understand the Holy Spirit. But I'm telling you, the Spirit is God's presence, the one who created the cosmos, who created the world, who created the mountains. That God, with all that unlimited power, his Spirit is inside of you. Well, that's what it is. Ephesians 1, 19 and 20. That power is the same. Come on, man. This is what's inside of you. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead. Now, why is it the same? Well, why did Jesus Christ rise from the dead? The scripture actually tells us that God raised him from the dead because the death could not hold him down. You wanna know why? Jesus had power over sin. He never sinned. That's the power. He had the power to love God with all of his heart, soul, mind, and strength. He had the power to say no to every temptation. And it says, every temptation you face, Jesus faced, and he never gave into it. How's that? That's some power. And so when Jesus died, since the wages of sin is death, and since Jesus had never sinned, then death couldn't hold him down. So when Jesus rose from the dead, when God raised him from the dead, it's because I have power over sin. Isn't that cool? Now, here's the deal. All of you who said you don't, you don't have it. He alone has it. But it is power over sin. It's power to love God, to say yes to God that human beings don't possess. That's what it is. It's power to be in union with God. And that unlimited power is yours to receive. Man, if you need to love your spouse better, if you need to love people better, if you need peace over your anxiety, if you need hope over your addiction to the stuff that's destroying your life, Jesus Christ has the power. And he wants to give it to you. So, how do we receive it? If the power is the ability to be in union with God and walk with him, how do we receive it? Acts 1.8, you will. Did you guys hear this? You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And here's the beautiful thing. You actually receive the Holy Spirit as a gift. It's called grace, you guys. Grace is something you can't do. Grace is something that is a free gift and it's all based on the heart of the giver. It's not based on anything. You don't earn it. You don't, you don't be good enough to get it. It's God who says, I freely out of my love for you, give you the gift and he gives you the gift of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 1.19 says, his incomparably great power is for us who believe. So how do you receive the power? How does the Holy Spirit come on you? Okay, well, it comes on you when you're saved. Okay, now I don't know, if some of you are in here and you're not uh, used to the Christian tradition, the whole idea of being saved can be kind of weird. Now, all of us who believe in Jesus Christ, I'm telling you right now, it's like when you actually believed and put your faith in Christ, you were no longer separated from God, now and forever. And the Bible says what? You were saved by grace. You were saved by grace. God did a work in you. God moved in your heart to make you even interested in himself. Then God forgave you of all of your sins through Jesus Christ. God reconciled you. You all were here last week at Easter? <laughs> it's all from God. That's a gift. And it says you are saved by grace through 
what? Faith. So how do we receive the Holy Spirit? By grace, God gives him to us as a gift when we put our faith in him. Now here's what it means to believe, and this is where we struggle as American Christians. Because we think believe means just to cognitively assent that that happened. That is not belief, okay? The word believe in the scripture is the same word as faith, and it means a conviction, a deep conviction that leads you to a deep trust. That's what faith is. It's a conviction that leads you to a confident trust. And you know what? All of you guys know what this is. (laughs) Because every one of you who got here today, you hopped in a car and you drove here. Right? How many, everybody get here that way? You know what you did? You had confident trust. You had a conviction and a confident trust that I can hop in this car and drive here and I'll get there. You believe that's what was happening. And so you're sitting here. Today. Oh, and by the way, you're sitting here today. You know why? Because I don't think, let me see. I don't see, well, there's a couple people standing, but I think they're working. Every one of you sat in your chair today. Now, how many of you went to the chair and, just, and checked it out? I, did anybody do that? No, you know why? Because you know the chair was gonna hold you. So every one of you, you had a conviction that led to a confident trust and you just plopped yourself right in the seat. That's faith. To all, now listen to this, to all who receive Christ and to those who believe in his name, God gives the right to become children of God, born of him. Jesus said this, you can't, listen, You can't enter my kingdom unless you're born of the Spirit. You know what he's saying? He goes, you can't follow God. A kingdom isn't a place, it's a rule. In other words, he's saying, because faith is a confident trust. It's a deep conviction that says, you know what, God, whatever you say, I'll do. I believe in you with all my heart, so I'll do whatever you want to say. And he says, nobody can do that unless you get a new spirit inside of you. But if you will put your faith in me, I will give you the Holy Spirit. And that's how you receive him. It is grace. God moves. He does it. You put your faith in him. You trust him. And then you receive the gift. You receive it. And you know what's so cool, you guys? I was talking with somebody about this this week. See, I did. That's what God did. He poured grace in my life, wooed me to himself, I got to the point where I said, okay, God, I trust you completely. I give you my life. I put my faith in you. And then I received eternal life. I received the gift of the Spirit inside of me. And you know what? I am absolutely confident today that I'm going to be saved. Are you? And are you going to do it? No. God forgave you. God is with me today to empower me. And when I die, God is the one who will raise me and I'll be in heaven with him. It's all God. That's how you receive him. So what is the power? It's the Holy Spirit of God. It's his presence inside of you, empowering you to do what Jesus did so you could live like him. How do you receive it? You put your faith in him. All right. But now, how do we experience the power? Because here's what I know. Not everybody in here. Some of you have still yet to receive the power. Most of you in this room, most of you watching online today have put your faith in Christ and you would say, I possess the Holy Spirit inside of me. And I just want to ask you, are you experiencing it? Are you experiencing immeasurable, incomparably great power? You know, for my birthday just a few weeks ago, um, Susie got me a, 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 one of those new gas uh, fire pits, right, outside. So last night was the first night, you know, so it, it's all put together. Everything's there so it can work. And then what did I do? I went out to the grocery store and I bought the propane tank, right, because you need the power. So I stuck the propane tank inside. You guys following this? Stuck it inside, connected it all up, put it together, and I'm ready. I turn the little crank, and I can hear the sss, oh, the gas is coming, and I hit the igniter, and nothing. <laughs> so 
so I check everything and I do it all again. And I make sure it's all right. I, 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 and then I put it down and I click the thing and nothing. So how frustrating this. Why won't this stupid thing work? Have you guys ever felt that way about your life? I'm telling you, I've been following Jesus for 33 years and sometimes I just look in the mirror and go, come on, dude. Why won't my life work? You know what's interesting? I decided to look at the instructions. It, it, it was a crazy idea. And then when I looked at the instructions, it was like, oh, a battery. I didn't, because I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell. I couldn't see it. I didn't understand it. Because you have to actually unscrew the, the igniter thing and it comes out and a little battery is supposed to fit inside there. Well, who would have known that? See, and we're all trying to figure out, like, how do I live a supernatural, powerful life? Well, the scripture tells us, man, it was amazing. So I stuck the battery in, turned on, psst, nothing. Because I didn't put the battery the right way. I flipped the battery around. <laughs> I stick it in, click. It was a much better flame than I had thought. And I'm telling you right now, you figure out how to ignite the power of the Holy Spirit of God that rose Jesus from the dead and it will be like, Whoa. and this is God's plan for you and for me. So how do we experience the power? Colossians 2, 6 says this. Just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him. Well, how did you receive him? Well, it was grace. It was a total gift from God, God's grace. God did something I couldn't do. And then I decided to put my faith in him. And then I received the gift of salvation. It's a gift. He poured his grace. I, I trusted him. And then he saved me. And what the scripture tells us, then live that way. The same way you received him is the way you're supposed to live in him. In other words, God still, it's still about his grace. Right, and you know what it says? You are saved by grace through faith, not by works. You don't save yourself. Good luck on that one. Well, guess what? You don't, Christian word, sanctify yourself. In other words, you don't have the power. The Holy Spirit is the power and God gives you grace and then you trust him to do it and then you receive the power. And it'll come up. So man, I am so excited because I've been in ministry for 33 years and I think I'm just starting to get this. Anybody else encouraged by that? You're like... And we, why do we go here? Okay. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Crazy passage. Paul says, to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. You guys know what, what, what's pride? Other, other versions call this from being conceited. Another version says, to keep me from exalting myself. You know what's interesting? In the Greek, it's the word hyper. The same word for exceedingly greatness power. Paul was saying, God is humbling me to keep me from thinking exceedingly great about myself. Paul's like, cool stuff's happened. So the biggest danger for me is I could start thinking that I can do it. And Paul was so gracious to him to say, man, I'm gonna make sure that you know you can't do it. I'm gonna tell you right now, the greatest hindrance, all you followers of Jesus, online and here, the greatest hindrance to you experiencing the power of the Holy Spirit is your self-confidence, it's your self-will, and it's your self-effort. It's yourself. You were created as a dependent being, and as much as you need food, water, and air to live physically, you need the Spirit of God to live. 
And so part of our problem is we don't think we need it. We think we can do it. That was Peter's problem. (laughs) Peter had so much self-confidence. He was so self-assured. Peter was so actually even honoring himself. He's going, I'm gonna sit at the right hand of the Father. (laughs) When Jesus told him, he goes, I need to be crucified and and, and dead and and, and be treated horribly. Peter's like, no, you won't do that. He's telling God. He thinks he knows. And then when he says, and all of you are are gonna betray me, Peter's like, no, I will never do that. Self-confidence, I'm the man that God, you told me, Jesus, you told me I was a rock. Remember that? Watch me. Oh yeah, well, what happened? Failure, 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 because he relied on himself. How are you ever gonna have the power of the Holy Spirit inside of you, you guys. This is huge. Listen, look, let's keep going. Verse, six, verse eight. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. Isn't that interesting? Three times Paul's like, but God, can I just, I just want to be able, I want to be able to do this. Please take away this, this thing that's hindering from being able to do it. And God's like, mm-mm. I'm not going to do it because if as soon as you do that, you'll think you can do it. And as far as long as you try to do it, you're going to fail. But my grace, my gift to you is sufficient to empower you. And then look at this next phrase. For my power is made perfect in weakness. You guys, you have unlimited power through the Holy Spirit, but it's perfected, it's made complete in your weakness. Here's, here's how this works, you guys. As long as we think we can do it, we're gonna try. And as long as we try, then we're relying on our power. But as soon as we say, I can't, I can't, I can't do this. Right, you say, I can't. See, when you can't do it, you'll finally go to him. You'll actually look to God, which is what he wants in the first place. For you were created by him to be dependent on him. And so your weakness, when you stop trying to be super Christian and prove how good you are through all your works, and instead you just go, I can't do it. Those are your instructions. And the power of God will fill you when you finally become empty. He goes on, therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. And that is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardship, and in persecutions, and in difficulties, because when I'm weak, then I'm strong. You know, it's interesting, in Romans chapter 7, you guys, if you, guys, if you want to read a couple of interesting chapters, Romans chapter 7, Paul just is saying, he goes, man, I just, I can't do it. Stuff like this. I have the desire to do as good. I can't carry it out. For I don't do the good I want to do, but the very evil I don't want to do, that's what I keep on doing. Anybody relate to that? Did you guys know in chapter seven, in that section, I, me, and my are used more than 40 times. And you never see one mention of the Holy Spirit or of Jesus. (laughs) I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying to be a good person. I want it, I do, I really want it. I'm trying, I'm trying 40 times. He's I'm trying. I can't do it. And then he finally says, what a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? He finally says, I can't do it. Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And then you turn over to chapter eight and in the first 16 verses of chapter eight, the Holy Spirit's mentioned 16 times. Come on, man. How are you gonna do this? How are you gonna love God? How are you going to say no to all the temptations? How are you going to finally get over your addictions? How are you going to love people and put other people over yourself? How are you going to finally be faithful with your finances and do what God wants you to do? How are you going to live this when you finally say, I can't. I can't do it. 
I have a picture in my office. And this is my life right here. And as I've been learning this concept, that picture right there is amazing to me. Listen to the scripture as you look at that. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. All surpassing power, you guys, comes from God and not for us. And so in weakness, there's three things that I just want to tell you. This is what we say. In weakness, we say these three things. Number one, we say, I can't do it. When you're finally weak, you finally admit, I can't do it. In fact, could we all just say this together? On the count of three, just I can't do it. One, two, three. I can't do it. I can't do it. I want to believe. Some of you are even right now. Like, I want to believe, but I can't do it. Well, then tell God. And some of you are like, I believe, but I can't surrender my life to him. Well, then, then say, I can't do it. I can't love my spouse or my parents or those people. Then, then say, I can't do it. I can't, I can't get over my finances. I can't get over these addictions, then just say, I can't do it. You know, celebrate recovery that we do, which is based on the 12 steps. The first step is I admit that I am powerless to control my tendency to do the wrong thing and that my life is unmanageable. The first thing you say is I'm powerless. Here's the second thing. I can't, the first thing you do is you confess to God, I can't do it. Here's the second thing you do. You turn to God and you say, you can do it. Okay? Let's say you can do it. On the count of three, one, two, three. You can do it. And that's why CR Accelerate Recovery says the second step is earnestly believe that God exists, that you matter to him, and that he has the power to help recover. See, and this is where we remember. It's why we gather, you guys. Why do we do this every Sunday? Why do we do Life Together groups? Why do I get up every morning and soak in his word? Because I need to remind myself, you can do it. You are love. You are good. You are right. And you're all powerful. The omnipotent God who raised Jesus from the dead does have the power, you guys, to change your life. He does. So I can't do it, you can do it. And then the last thing is you trust in God and you say, you will do it. Let's say that, one, two, three. You will do it. According to his power, right? His power at work within you. So you consciously, third step of CR, consciously choose to commit all of your life and will to Christ's care and control. And I just want to tell you right now, here's what you got to do and here's what I have to do if you want to experience the power. I can't do this, God. You can do this. I'm going to trust you. Take all of me. You got to say, God, take all of me. If you don't surrender everything to God, if you don't empty yourself out, then he doesn't fill you up. Take all all of me. And you know what that means? This is what I'm learning. That means take my weakness, God. Take my doubts. Take my fears. Take my sin. Take my incapability. And God's like, thank you. That's all I wanted. I just wanted you weak. Isn't that weird? God wants us to be weak. Because then we depend on him. I trust you, God. Take this broken, cracked clay pot that's empty. And he's like, got it. And then you ask for help. And I want to tell you, this is what I've been doing. You just ask for help. I am learning right now, every situation I'm in, when I feel like, I don't know if I can do this. I'm finally learning. Then ask him in the moment. Say, God, you can do this. I can't do this. You can do this. You will do this. I'm asking you. And look at this verse, Philippians 2.13. And band, you guys can come on up. Philippians 2.13 says, it is God who works in you 
to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. You guys, that's the greatest news. Remember what it said? To him who's able to do immeasurably more than all you could ask or imagine according to his power at work in you. And then this one says, and it is God who works in you to will, to even give you the will. So that's why I'm saying like right now, if you're like, man, I know I'm supposed to love difficult people, but I don't, I don't even want to. Okay, then tell God. And then God will work in you to will. God, I don't want to give you one dime. I, 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 I want to use everything for myself. I know that's selfish and I shouldn't do that, but I, I, I'm just being honest with you. He's like, good, then tell me. Tell me, confess that to me. And then God will work in you. Do you guys see how this works? And that's why we can say, I trust you, that God will do it. The power is not in you. And once you become weak and empty, then you finally become dependent. And then you finally go to the source who has power that rose Jesus from the dead. And so we're gonna sing this song all year long, I feel like God's been saying to me, David, I'm as close to you as the air that you breathe. I am right here. The problem is you don't breathe. You keep trying. And he's just like, would you just breathe? Would you just come to me and breathe me in? I have the energy. I have the power. And it's inside of you through the Holy Spirit. But you got to depend on me. Just as you receive me and trust me for your salvation, receive me and trust me to give you the power to walk with me. God is asking you guys to do something you can't do without him. With man, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So as we worship, don't sing songs, worship today. And what does that mean? Well, one of the ways you worship God is you go to him and you say, I need you. God, you might just need to sit here and just go through a list. God, I can't do. And you, whatever your list is, and just be honest with him while we're singing. And then you go to him and you say, and I'm looking to you. God, be that for me, all right? And we're gonna worship and we're gonna cling to him and we're gonna be weak and we're gonna receive the power of the Holy Spirit that rose Jesus from the dead. All right, let's worship together.